lives are we supposed to start the podcast? Ready? One, two, three. I'm just getting so good at that. The clap on is just, I mean, we're hitting our stride with that. We are. I mean, it's just better every time. Every single yes. time, listener, that the clap on of this podcast <laughs> is peaking. We're, it's at its peak. That's not good for the future trajectory <laughs> of the pod. <laughs> That's not, not good at all. Pumps, what have you had it with? Okay, what I've had it with is a bad house guest. And let me tell you why. So as you know, people in Oklahoma for the weekends, they go to the lake. So when you're at the lake, you're not close to towns, generally speaking. Like a grocery store, you typically buy your stuff before you leave. So at the lake, one of my dearest friends hosted about 20 people for the weekend. Okay. And That's probably her first mistake. <laughs> right, right, right out of the gates, you host 20 people. What could possibly go wrong right. with this fucking amazing species of ours? But right. go on. Right. You make a great point. Go on. So she has done all the shopping for all the meals that are going to be made, being hostess with the mostess. Okay. She had two guests that were vegetarian and gluten-free that did not bring their own food. So she had to scour the planet for vegetarian and gluten-free options in a lake town in Oklahoma. And how, you know, old, how old are these These people? are adults, like Age. 20s, early 20s. Early 20s. Early okay, 20s. That's, that's Okay, that's putting the camera lens into focus. If this is a 40-year-old, I've got a huge problem. But early 20s still peak narcissism. But I, I just can't wrap my head around it. Like, are you seriously going to have the host go out and buy more food because you can't bring your own food? Like, your food issues are your problem. They're not my problem. They're not anybody else's problems. If you are want to be vegetarian and gluten-free, good for you. But don't burden somebody else with that. I was just shocked that that happened. I'm shocked that you're shocked. I know. I guess I shouldn't be, but I was just like, what I mean, on have, earth? Have you been on the internet lately? <laughs> have you seen all of the fucking, you know, I'm gluten-free, I'm vegan, I'm vegetarian. I mean, it is a fucking battle cry now. I mean, you can't go to one, you can't go through 30 seconds of being on the internet without hearing about somebody's dietary restrictions. And it's like they're flexing. But let me ask you this. Did these, any of these guests have uh, celiac disease. I do not know the answer to that, but I'm guessing for sure they didn't. Well, then why the fuck was she scrambling around trying to find them something? I would have been like, well, this is what I'm serving. Yes, that's exactly what I told her. Tough titties. If you don't like it and you can't eat it, suck a bag of dicks. It's not my fault. Tough titties. We're not Tough like... Tough titties. And it's so selfish. She sees that she's hosted 20 people. Right. And she's... and But then your friend goes out and tries to enable... Yes. These... Yeah. See, I can't. I mean, first of all, I'd never invite 20 people to right. stay overnight with me. Ever. ever. So kind of, I put everything at that on her. <laughs> You know what I mean? The fuckery with the gluten-free and the fuckery with the vegans, that's just her problem that she invited 20 people for an overnight stay, <laughs> especially 20, early 20-something. 20 right. I think it's anybody's problem but hers. But she felt like she was a bad hostess if she didn't move heaven and earth to go get gluten-free slash vegan items in podunk America, Oklahoma. That's probably not even heard of gluten-free, if I were guessing. Well, I am just, I, I just have a hard time relating to anything in the story because number one, I like gluten. Right. <laughs> number two, I, I eat meat. If you're vegetarian and you're gluten-free, good for you. Quit fucking talking about your diet. Right. Number three, I would never invite 20, <laughs> 20 something year olds. I would instead say, here are the keys to the lake house to my 20 year old. It's your fucking problem. Right. Doesn't surprise me that two narcissistic 21, 22-year-old girls whose mother's done everything for them <laughs> in their entire life transfers that kind of caretaking to whomever's around them. Yeah. 
I mean, that's nobody, a valid point. There's, nobody's ever checked these girls, including your friend that hosted them. She never checked them. Right. And no. said, listen up, I'm not doing that. I've got meals for 20 people here. This is what I'm serving. Here's my car keys. You can go to the grocery store and find something or nobody's checked them, including your friend. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. It That's takes, for sure. It takes a village. And the it problem is everybody enabling these selfish monsters. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. Mic drop. So you've done a lot of bragging about fuck, Mary kill. Yes. And we have okay. deprived our listener of pumps who claims to be the queen. I'm so good at it. Of fuck, Mary kill. Okay. So I have three different sets for you. I'm so excited. I love to play this game. Okay. All right. The first one. Okay. Barack Obama. Okay. Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt. Gosh, that's like Sophie's Choice. They're all just fantastic. Okay, so I think that I'm absolutely marrying Barack, of course. Okay. I'm fucking Brad Pitt because he's hotter than shit. And I'm going to kill Tom Brady because he's pretty boring when I've seen him in interviews. Like, he wouldn't make me laugh. I mean, he's a pretty face. I like that he's tall. But no, I'd have to kill him. Yeah. Dead. Okay. All right. The next round. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. Timothy Oliphant. <gasps> my favorite. George Clooney. Oh, my gosh. This is so hard. Because they're all, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of them. You said you're the queen of this. I know. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. God, I love Timothy Oliphant so much. Okay. Okay, I'm going to marry him. Okay. Because I love him. Okay. And then I guess... I'm going to have to fuck George Clooney and then Neil deGrasse Tyson, who I love, and he's so funny, but I guess I have to kill him. All right. Okay. All right. Um, fuck, Mary kill. Elon Musk. Ugh. Ted Cruz. Oh. Donald Trump. Oh, my God. I have to marry one of those? You said you're really good at this. I'm waiting to die laughing like I did with Jared Freed. So let's... Let's go. You said you were oh the queen God. that you fancied yourself so good at this. I am good at it. I thought my last two I did so good on. Oh, my God. Like, I don't know who I would kill. That's the hardest one. Okay, who was the first one again? Elon Musk. Okay, I guess what I'll do is because I know Elon Musk, he runs around and has babies with all these people, but then he's never around. So I'll legally marry him just because I think he wouldn't be around and he's rich and he's rich right you could have a pj i could have a pj spaceship right whatever hope he i would marry elon hoping he blew up in a spaceship so i could just get all the money and he'd okay. be gone who you fucking lion ted or donald oh my you god you gotta fuck you gotta fuck ted cruz or donald trump the queen of fuck mary kill come on ah, okay i'm just gonna say okay i would i would fuck ted cruz <laughs> oh i mean oh I mean, I'm like throwing up in my mouth. You're fucking Ted. I'm fucking Ted. You're fucking Ew, Ted. That fat fuck. <laughs> but at least he's smart a Is little bit. He? I mean, because it's obvious Trump's just dumber than a box of hot rocks. I could say he's pretty funny. I mean, he's funnier, but he believes it. You're fucking Ted. I'm fucking Ted. And obviously I'm killing Donald, which I don't know. I just can't fuck Donald Trump. As bad as Ted is, I just can't. Yeah, and I think it would be better for civilization for for you to kill Trump. Absolutely. Ted is never going to get elected to anything other than senator of Texas. Right. He's not going to, because even the Republicans hate him. Right. Everybody universally hates, hates the guy him. that you've signed up to fuck. <laughs> Everybody hates your fuck buddy, yeah. Ted Cruz. Including his friends. Inc his neighbors, his, his friends, friends, entire countries, his yeah. own political party. Everybody hates your little fuck buddy, yeah. Ted Cruz. I didn't, you didn't say I had to like it. All right. Welcome to I've Had It. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. And right now we're going to check in with Kylie for a little social media update. Kylie, what's going on in the social media world? There's a lot going on. Ooh. Ooh. I think I'm going to spread a little bit of positivity right off the bat. Let's do it. Because we're, we're so positive. You right. are. Yeah. So Michael commented on YouTube. And said, our goddess of kindness, Jessica. 
Oh, Jessica's so kind. Always looks so classy in her yacht captain slash part-time librarian attire, sitting next to Pumps in her hoish excuse for an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, YouTube, I love that you say that I wear yacht captain attire, and I'm going to continue. I love a yeah. blazer. I love a blazer with gold buttons. You can call me Julie from the Love Boat. Yes. For those of you that are young that don't know, just go ahead and YouTube that in because she was like the hospitality chair of the Love Boat, wasn't she? The yes. Creator? Social social director. Social director. But you have totally bought into the yacht captain because we were talking about a deal we have next week and you're like, I'm going to go full yacht captain. <laughs> oh, I'm going full yacht full captain. Yacht. Yeah. Love it. All of my power suits that have gold buttons now, Josh and I always say, said, what are you going to wear today? And I go, I'm going full yacht captain. <laughs> Pumps, are you going full hoe? I don't know what I did to go full hoe, but I'm staying with it. Stay with the hoe. Stay with the hoe. I'm, I'm manifesting. We oppose manifesting. <laughs> okay, Kylie, who's next? Okay, Josh commented on Instagram. And Wait, said, is this Josh Welch? It's not Josh Welch. Oh, I was okay. going to say. He said, at pumps, pumps, pumps. Oh, Lord. If I were straight and much, much older, <laughs> <laughs> all caps, I would father your children. Oh, isn't that so nice, Josh? That It's kind of a backhanded compliment a little bit, though, because he talks about how old I am. Yeah. So, I mean, but I'll take it. I'll yeah, take it. That's nice. All right. Who's next? Okay. Next, I'm going to read a comment from Natasha S. on YouTube. Okay. She said, okay, I had to pause the video just to write this comment. You were talking about prison, which got me thinking, what would Jane and Pips be like in prison? <laughs> Jackie 100% would be top dog. Everyone would be her bitch. She would definitely embrace gay for the stay because she gives off lesbian top vibes for sure. <laughs> In parentheses, I mean power blazers, and she can never sit properly in her chair. Peep the shoe on the table. Very gay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you're the one transitioning on the arc. She would also run the drug trade in there because she's always talking about tapping veins and injecting shit, so it just makes sense. Totally. <laughs> now, Pops would obviously be the leader of the rival prison gang. <laughs> she doesn't need to embrace gay for this day because she's already a lesbian. <laughs> She would be the person to help people with their parole applications. She takes payment in the form of sachets of sweet tea. Probably smuggled up their asses, but it doesn't bother her because she's good with a spoon in the back door. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Mm -hmm. Put together well. Great what about delivery. Me being a lesbian power top. Oh, God, I love that. That is hysterical. I love how she kept calling us different names. I do too. That was fun. You know, Pumps, I love to shop. And I have found this new brand, Quince. It's amazing. I got these great little like camis to wear under my blazers because you know I love a power blazer. They have 100% Mongolian cashmere sweater for only like $50. It's amazing to take these like basic staples you need into your wardrobe and integrate them in on a budget. Well, you know, I hate to shop, but I have also found Quince. I love their clothes. They're comfortable, affordable breathable. I have just been so impressed. The quality is so good. It's like a fraction of the price that I thought I was going to have to pay. Shop with Quince today and discover the affordable luxury you deserve. Right now, go to quince.com slash had it to get free shipping and a 365 day return on your next order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash had it for free shipping, 365 day returns. Quince.com slash had it. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. Pumps, I have been taking AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, increased energy, immune system support, and I hate, I mean hate, taking pills and vitamins, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. It is the healthiest thing I'm doing for myself, and I can do it under one minute. And you know what a time manager I am. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day, and it has given me increased energy. I'm crushing it on the pickleball court. Listener, if you are looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash had it. That's athleticgreens.com slash had it. You've got to check this out. 
Okay. Um, next up, we have a guest, and she is the host of Scam Goddess. Let's welcome to I've Had It podcast, Lacey Mosley. Okay, Lacey Mosley, the Scam Goddess. <laughs> what is going on? Hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you guys. I've seen your YouTube, so I feel like I know you. So um, <laughs> now I can scam you. Totally. Perfect. Totally. So Lacey, you know, if, if you've seen us on YouTube, then you know that this is a show with like, you know, five star shit talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what's going to go on here, Lacey. And so what we want to know from you is what have you had it with? Oh my goodness. Okay. I have had it with rents, landlords, everything that's like to be a millennial. Um, <laughs> it, it's never ending shit. I feel like there's nothing that was left in good shape for us at all. And like everyone talks about this all the time, right? But specificity with like, why can't I write off my rent? Like y'all not gonna let me have a house, right? I can never own a home. Like, that, okay, fine. Can I at least write off my rent? Like I own a home. This is my home. You see these walls? I've been painting. I live in an apartment. We paint now in the apartment. We <laughs> nest in them. We redo the, the appliances because we're like, this is it. I'm gonna die here. Right, okay? right. Like, you know, some people like a really fancy place they live in has an elevator, but there's like two versions of that. Either you have an elevator because there's several floors packed with millennials who will never be able to own property, <laughs> or you have an elevator because you've hoarded all the wealth and you own the biggest properties in town. And, so it's like, <laughs> and it boggles the mind. Now you live in New York? No, I live in Los Angeles, which makes it worse. There's actually land here. Oh. But it's so expensive. And so you're saying the boomers... And the Gen Xers, and we're Gen Xers. Yeah, yeah. Pumps is kind of on the on the cusp. I'm she not be on the cusp. No. Anyway, I uh, love like a zodiac sign. I'm on the cusp. <laughs> She's on the cusp of Gen X uh, boomer. But anyway, you're saying that we've gobbled up all the land. Yeah. And you guys are stuck in these apartments, and you get no tax write off, and it's a total right. dick over. It is, and like, what's even more frustrating about it is that all this like, like oh, the, it's not because of scarcity. That's the issue. It's like there's so many vacant, empty places, but now people are buying up property like it's freaking stock on the damn stock market. Um, you know, like watching the house like it's the NASDAQ waiting to sell as soon as there's like enough Starbucks on the block. And it's like that is empty. I could be in there luxuriating in that home. But no, no, because like I was on Zillow the other day just because like it's so... I'm a masochist. So it's like, <laughs> it's like... You know, look and be like, oh, never, right, um, right, never. And I saw a house that was the ugliest piece of crap I've ever seen in my life. I kid you not, it was one thousand six, uh, one thousand sixty-five square feet. I remember it this early. One point three million dollars. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. If you're a millennial and you're trying to live in New York or California or some like really cool urban right. city you're so fucked you're so fucked because real estate prices are so crazy right now and I can see you're stuck in the renter world I mean and I remember I remember the days of renting and you want your place you want to nest you want to make it your home but you know what you're doing Lacey you're building somebody else's wealth right now right paying rent yes I looked you up and read your whole bio mm -hmm. and you, I was born in Dallas, but I saw that you were born in Dallas and then lived in Frisco. Mm -hmm. I just finished a home, designing a home in Frisco and it's in one of those gated communities. So I want to talk to you since we're on the whole real estate vibe about suburbia and you grew up in suburbia. Frisco, Texas listener is like a a suburb of Dallas and it ha it's very dystopian feeling wouldn't you say yeah absolutely all the houses look like the exact same uh -huh. um every subdivision has school all the way up to high school so in my like uh neighborhood there was an elementary school a middle school and a high school like all within walking distance wow. um which i didn't realize was not normal right. i was like yeah, your schools are just not all in your neighborhood like mine <laughs> very dystopian um and it's only gotten more cookie cutter but people love it you know what i mean and now it's yeah. like become a city because thanks to jerry jones uh who we later found out was a racist but <laughs> the cowboys 
It was a good bet. He's so old. Like, oh. in that way, you know. Oh, if I had to bet money on that, I would have been for sure yeah. that cranky a white dude's a racist. I mean, when that thing came out, my husband had been saying for years, I can't stand Jerry Jones. I bet he's a racist. And it came out and he goes, what did I fucking tell you? He just <laughs> has it written all over his face. I like, my husband grew up loving the Cowboys, but when Jerry Jones became the super outspoken owner, he... My husband was like, I'm calling it right now. Something's up with this guy. But I do want to talk about, I worry about the suburbs. And I've kind of had it with the suburbs. Let me tell you why. The dystopian aspect of it. And then you've got all these cookie cutter houses. All the the strip malls look the same. You got your Target. You got your Petco. You got your Walgreens across the street, the CVS. They tend to be really white. And I just worry that out in these suburbs, we're breeding dystopian, uncultured, white Petri dishes of people. And I just, I really worry about the suburbs. Every time I drive through them, I'm like, I just don't know what's going on out here. And I don't know if I'm for it. (laughs) I really, I I don't know what's going on out here. I worry. I worry about it, Lacey, in this this, uh, development that I just uh, installed the design project in. They all have these golf carts, right? And everybody drives their golf carts around in their neighborhood. They're all drunk, driving around golf carts. And I just worry. I just worry about what's going on out there. I just, I think there's a lot of fuckery going on in the suburbs. You know what's also interesting, uh, to your point, is that suburbs make it extremely difficult for minorities to get housing because of homeowners associations. I just went down on a deep dive on HOAs and how they can prevent certain people from coming into neighborhoods. And actually, um, and about how random fees and fines can pile up and they have lawyers and HOAs are privately owned. So they're basically just the mob. Um, (laughs) They're your your, like government of your neighborhood, the cul-de-sac government. Like it's very bizarre. (laughs) So if they can give you speeding tickets and they can enforce it and they can add fines to the point where they can take your home, like they can foreclose on your home, which is so bizarre to me. But the HOAs in specifically in McKinney, I know that when there were like, there was some kind of law implemented and it was so interesting to me because we had all seen on the news how there was like these little black girls in swimsuits and the police were like beating up on them and it became like national news. Randomly one day I was in a trailer and like, Sometimes in acting trailers, like, depends on the lot, if they're, like, hella old, it'll just be, like, the, the smallest TV inside of the, um, like, built inside the trailer, and it only plays, like, PBS, on re- like, on repeat forever. Right. So you don't have anything else to watch. So I was watching it, and it was about McKinney, and it was about how they had implemented, like, these rules for lower-income housing where there had to be a certain amount of it in the area. So that is why the policing like went through the roof because then people were trying to protect their cul-de-sacs and their property by harassing people. And I noticed I used to get followed home a lot around that time. And like all my parents drive a Mercedes and I would get followed home, pulled over. And they'd be like, you don't have your lights on. And I'm like, uh, you see them lights on. Like, come on, let's right. be so serious. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's the deal, Lacey. Like, this is what I worry about in the suburbs. I think they're really white. I think they've got really bad architecture. I think they're not. Oh, the worst. Ooh. The worst architecture. They're not integrating the communities. I'm happiest as a person when I'm around diversity. And then the suburbs, it just seems like the super focus of white people. And I think sometimes they come up with bad ideas. In fact, oh, that's all they're doing over there. They're cooking up. <laughs> Listen, no, there's no more imagination than in the suburbs. They are making up people, conspiracies all the damn time. That's all they do for fun. They get, they have bunco night, they have their wine, and then they talk about how the trans uh, corrupting our kids. And it's like, there was a shooting in right. our area, the, like just the other day. Like, bro, they happen every single day. But they're like, no, 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 no. It's the drag queens. I'm like, I think like, <laughs> you know what it is, y'all. Like we, have, it's right there, and so yeah, they cook up conspiracies because they're bored. Right, like right. The house that, that, like, I always say that people who refuse to look in a mirror look out the window. So, oh, I like that, Ter- Lacey. What is the county that Frisco's in in Texas? Is it Tarrant County? Collin. Collin. Okay, that county had the highest percentage of attendees at the January sixth insurrection. <laughs> The county that you came from. No, it is a fact. Google it. Fucking write it down. Your county that had the highest percentage of motherfuckers that went to try to go overturn the election. I mean, listen, (laughs) it's like I need to explain that, but I will. 
I lived there. So that wasn't shocking. And I right. will say it was like weird and hilarious and also, you know, fucked up when um you <laughs> see like realtors that you've seen like advertisements for, you know, and all this stuff. And now they're like being called away in like chains. And they're, you, know, <laughs> like, you, know, like, you took a private jet to go to the Capitol and and run it like it was Disneyland. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you, this is so embarrassing. Aren't you embarrassed? Yeah, I mean, so the more, I mean, the moral of the story, listener, is I'm worried about the suburbs. I'm more, yeah. I'm glad you made it out safe, Lacey. That's all I'm saying. I'm glad Isn't you. Isn't that crazy to say? Yeah, I made it out the suburbs safe. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get me. But it's so true. <laughs> it, <laughs> is, it is true. I worry about all these kids just, you know, getting totally indoctrinated that that's all there is in the world is cookie right. cutter houses, you know, these specific, you know, nationwide stores, no art no diversity. I mean, you know, I just, ho I hope everybody makes it out. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Right. No art. Like what are y'all just golf and gossip and swinging? Oh, a lot of swinging. oh there's Lots a lot of swinging, of swinging going on. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even understand what swinging was until, uh, I can't remember this couple in our neighborhood kept like, come, like they, they would walk by, you know, strike up conversation with my parents and stuff. And they kept telling my parents how they need to come over and see their new pool table. And it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was like, oh. Now I want to talk about, so your podcast, Scam Goddess, you cover these scams, which Pumps and I have always called scams rackets. I'm rackets. Like, that's a total racket, okay? So I want to go around and everybody here, Pumps, myself, and our producer, Kylie, we're going to share with you our favorite scam slash racket, and I want you to give us feedback, and so I'm going to start first. So I just did, well, I watched the documentary Hillsong about the uh, Carl Lentz, the pastor, in New York, this big mega church, and he's this oh, yeah. charismatic preacher who's talking about saving yourself till marriage. He's making millions of dollars, not flying commercial. Right. He's big dicking in the big city, big time. This fucker's drawn in all these people, and it's purity culture, and everybody be a virgin. He's making millions, and then there are these women that volunteer for this church in black and brown communities that work 40 hours a week for this church for free. Well, guess what? He fucked around. Now he's gone. On his wife. And then he found out and then he had to go. And so this is a big scam to me. This whole evangelical preacher where they make all this money. They fly in these PJs. They're saying, you know, What's that other guy that uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. that was paying the full pull boy, the pull boy to yeah. fuck his wife? Mm -hmm. Same kind of racket. These are the rackets that I have had it with. It, I think it's so disgusting to exploit people spiritually and then profit off of it. And these people really believe in you. Like you're they're really hopeful that you're a good person. And then most of the time they're not. They're not. No. No, I just think if you think you like God is texting you personally and, and nobody else and that you got to get the word out, there's some kind of delusion there to start <laughs> with. Um, I think some pastors really care about the community, but a big red flag for me is like when you want to grow a church, why do you need to grow a church? Let's just have people pull up where we are. Like, why do we, we need to reach more people? No, you need to make more money. Right, That's what right. you're trying to do. And like church, like religion in general is such a great way to scam people because it's baked right into the Bible. Walk by faith, not by by sight, meaning don't look at this stuff that is questionable. Right, right. <laughs> Believe that, you know what I mean? And like, and that, what that's supposed to mean is like, don't worry about your circumstance right now. Have faith that God will help you. But what it's been twisted into is like, don't worry about this private jet and this uh, Rolls Royce that I bought with the money that you gave to me willingly for absolutely no reason <laughs> and have no way to account for it. Joe Austin had a bathroom that had like behind the tile, just like thousands of dollars. Like in cash, like totally. One, God told you to do that. Like, I, what? What are we doing? I think that that movement, those evangelical preachers in these mega churches, is the biggest racket. And spoiler alert: guess where most of these mega churches are, Lacey? One guess. Suburbs. They're in the <laughs> they're in the fucking suburbs. They are in the suburbs. So I'm. Why just, have I been to four of them? I've been to Hillsong. T.D. Jakes's properties, um, Joel Osteen's properties. Well, I'll, 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 tell you, I'll tell you exactly why you've been to four. Because you were raised in the suburbs, and it just is the gateway drug 
to lead to that. <laughs> that was the first time I saw a credit card swiper like during offering. Like what? I no. it was, yes. Like you know it's usually a basket. They were like, right. oh don't worry, you can give God money on credit too. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then just passed it down. Yeah. That's unbelievable. I didn't know that. That is so bad. Yeah. Now I, you just text a number and that's how you do it. You Venmo for Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> See, I think you're right. Religion is the easiest one to pull a racket on people. You got Scientology, you know, all of these mega churches. It's a total racket, total racket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pumps, what's your favorite? Okay. I have two. I have, I'm tied for two with George Santos, which I listened to your podcast on him, which I loved, loved, him. loved. And then Elizabeth Holmes, the Theranos girl. What do you think George Santos believes his lies? I mean, when you deep dive into these scams, do you find that the people believe the lies or do they just don't give a shit that they're lying? No, I don't think George Santos believes his lies, but I do think that a lot of scammers, especially like him, because he was lying about things that he just didn't have to lie about. It's right. like, George, nobody asked. Like, literally <laughs> nobody asked. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, I graduated from Harvard. He's like, we didn't ask. Um, but I think there's a fun in people believing your lies. And so that's why they keep doing it because there's like a power and a control. It's like, I just made a whole reality that doesn't really exist and you're believing it. And there's so much power in that. I mean, look at what our government is. It's just a bunch of old white dudes who were like, let's make up rules for everybody. None of it's real. So I think like, I love a scammer like George because he was like, I'm going to make up my own rules. I'm going to lie. I'm going to do crime. Now, was he good at it? No. Like, you know, he could have taken some pointers with like a Clarence Thomas. Somebody, you know, in the game longer. They're yeah. doing it great. You know, but totally short lived career. Sad to see. Yeah. You know, what's interesting for me about George Santos is he's gay and like he's mm -hmm. going to the most homophobic party on the planet for comfort and like camaraderie. And it's like. Oh my God. It's like Candace Owens. You know, I'm like, what? What is wrong what? with you? What's going on there? Like, I don't get Business it. Business wise, it makes sense. I mean, there's so many educated Black women in liberal spaces and, uh, you know, trying to affect real change that it's hard. That's like a large room. Like saying something smart probably isn't going to get you the traction that it would is if you go be the puppet for the devil. Because then you're like, there's only a few Black people over here. So that's a clear lane for, you know, Kundis, excuse me, Candace, to, um, gain some notoriety and the same thing with george santos like when you don't have that many log cabin republicans it's so easy to shoot to the top and stand out because now you can be a mascot for this party that pretends that their platform isn't bigotry because they're like look at our look at our uh, diverse that we got get out there and be diverse <laughs> tell them tell them about it tell them about the gop diverse get out there <laughs> so they're being the diverse now i'll always hear some you know like white woman my age you know, upper middle class white woman, and she'll say something like, Oh, no, I really love Candace Owens. And I'm like, Oh, oh okay. now I know. All and then I they, need to they know. trot her out to say, Hey, I'm not racist. I listen to right. a black person. You know, she's Oprah for bigots. <laughs> <laughs> That is so good. That's okay. good. Pups go on about uh, Theranos. Okay, so the Theranos deal, which why they let her stay out of jail so long because she kept having babies, that just mm -hmm. turns my stomach deluxe. But so do we think that she believed her lies or she just got caught up in it? I'm really interested in that. I don't know why. So I think she's a unique case because obviously she was lying, but she was in this male dominated space where a lot of people in the beginning of launching their, you know, projects would lie to venture capitalists about how far along they were in the process and everything, because that kind of became the culture. It's like, we got to get the money first. So we can't tell them the tiny thing isn't actually made yet. Uh, you know, you just got to wow them and uh, razzle dazzle them. And so in that respect, I think that she did believe her lies because she was like, as soon as we get all this money from these people that I'm lying to, like, we're going to make the tiny thing. Like, don't right. worry about it, you know? And then once she got too deep in it, then she just started lying because she was, you know, went in way too deep. I don't really have sympathy for her because she scammed so many cancer patients. And it's like, bro, if you know that you're actually not being able to check these people's blood and they're dying, like, maybe just... 
I, she could have even just pulled out of that particular experiment and left those people alone. So persevere because you're chasing money and fame and doing a weird low voice and saying <laughs> you're too sexy for prison. Girl, you are not too not too cute for prison. You are just the right look for prison. I totally. told Jennifer that. I said, yeah, she said I s- stormed up here and was like, she said she's too pretty to go to prison. And Jennifer goes, well, she's not that pretty. <laughs> <laughs> she was wilding with that statement. Also, like, it's funny to see that she just like cosplayed Steve Jobs. She was like, she skipped a bunch of steps. Yeah, totally, totally. And rich people, uh, once you get to a certain level of wealth, uh, people dying becomes like a line item on a spreadsheet. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you're seeing that you're actually affecting people's livelihood. I think like, and Secession does like a, such a great job of that where they're like, you killed a guy at the end. They just like throw it out there. Like, oh yeah, right. He did kill a guy. But it was not an important thing because they're rich, right? So these right. people aren't people to them. Right. So that's why she had no remorse for them. I think she had more remorse for ripping off people rich enough to put her in jail because none of the counts that she's going to prison for have to do with the sick people that she hurt. It's all the money that she stole. Yeah, that's sad. Right. I mean, and that's kind of what it always boils back to is the money. The money. And our justice system has so many, it's kind of a racket. I mean, my husband was a criminal defense lawyer for many, many years. And people that committed white collar crimes could hire him. And they got Mm -hmm. preferential treatment in the court system. There's just no doubt about it. And so, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, but we don't, we don't need to digress into that because Kylie has, of course, yeah. Kylie has my favorite. My favorite scandal, Kylie, tell Lacey. Pumps, I'm just telling you, this Lumi deodorant is the best new thing that I've added to my daily life. The wipes are the best thing that I have added to my daily life. After workout, I can do a quick cleanup without having to stop my day makes it faster and I have full confidence that I'm not smelling. You can apply it to your pits, thigh folds, belly buttons, feet and beyond. And listener, Lumi was created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's aluminum free, baking soda free and paraben free. As a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code HADIT at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and be sure to use the code HADIT. It's a game changer. Listener, when I am not hosting this mega hit podcast with pumps... (laughs) I actually have a real job and I am an interior designer. I have been using Article to source furniture for years. Article believes in delightful design for every home. Recently, Pumps and I placed an order for the Kara Ivory Boucle sofa that we plan on rolling out here in our studio. I cannot wait to receive it because Article offers fast, affordable shipping across the United States and Canada. Plus, they don't leave you waiting around. You pick a delivery time and they'll send you updates every step of the way. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash had it, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash had it for $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. My favorite scammer is Hilaria Baldwin. She's got the fake okay. accent. She's been doing it forever. <laughs> And she grew up in a multi-million dollar home in Boston. In Boston. In Boston. Yeah. She grew up in Boston. Boston. And, she, and she's married to Alec Baldwin. She's had like 75 I know. Kids. I don't understand the kids. I'm confused. Oh, my confused. gosh. Okay, wait. I have to Google right now because I have to do a dramatic reading of her children's names because it is... <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I cannot believe that she pretended to be Spanish and then went as far as to give all of her children who are not <laughs> Spanish, Spanish names. It's like when I read these names to you, okay, here we go. Oh, Carmen Gabriel, <laughs> Raquel Tomas, Romeo Alejandro David, Eduardo Edu Pau Lucas, Maria Lucia Victoria. <laughs> and we've got four month old, Hilaria Catalina Irina. <laughs> Well Lacey. Oh my gosh, that was fantastic. I mean, I mean that shit is so good, Lacey. I mean, you a bit. But I want to tell you something. I really worry. Like when I when people breed a lot, it kind of freaks me out. You right. know, seven and counting, and he's old as fuck. Old as fuck. Mm-hmm. Seven and counting, and and then the whole like the whole faking the Spanish accent. That's fucked up. It's really bizarre. Now, the thing 
thing is, it's not, it's fucked up in a way that it's super weird, but it's not fucked up in a way racially, which I think a lot of people like missed because there's a difference between race and nationality. So I am a black person in America, right? You can be a white person in España. So it was just (laughs) goofy. It was goofy. That's what I think. It was totally victimless. I mean, she didn't hurt anybody. I mean, Alexander Baldwin, because you know, you used to have a thing for Salma Hayek. So she was like, I'm going to be Salma Hayek. Oh, that's probably right. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I remember when this first came out, because I have like a, I'll get on Twitter and I'll be on it for a long time if there's some scandal, and then I'm off of it for months on end. But when that thing came out, because it was the way it kind of came about, didn't somebody kind of just like do a random tweet and then it just went viral? Like, has anyone else noticed that Hilaria Baldwin is faking her Spanish accent? And everybody's like, oh, holy shit, she is. Another great time I had on Twitter was the Rudy Giuliani Four Seasons Total Landscaping press conference. That was fantastic. That shit was like fucking cocaine. Line after line, I was a fucking Hoover vacuum cleaner. I could not get enough of that shit. The tweets were high quality. The trolling was high quality. quality. The fact that that motherfucker thought he was going to the Four Seasons Hotel and he trots out to the Four (laughs) Seasons Total Landscaping. Next to the dildo store. Next to the sex (laughs) shop. It was just some of the best shit ever. Okay, Lacey, we're going to play a game with you. Had it or hit it? Oh, my God. Welcome to had it or hit it. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Had it or hit it, NFTs. Oh, my God, had it completely had it it's not real it's a ponzi scheme like can we be so serious and for real agree totally it's a total racket yeah it it's, t- a, it's our millennial ponzi schemes it's it's us we're responsible but y'all don't really <laughs> let us have money so we had to make up something That's to right. rob people you can't buy a house so you got to fucking do this shit i mean okay. yeah you need a monkey picture online <laughs> okay had it or hit it and this is to your generation gender reveal parties Oh, hit it. And oh. here's why. Here's why. Okay, let's hear I it. I told you, we don't have houses. You think I'm going to skip two opportunities to party and you buy my baby gifts and give me money? <laughs> oh. Do I care about the genitals of a baby? Absolutely not. But if it'll get you to my house with a gift, hit it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't argue with that logic. I mean, I know, I've had it. I've had it with the yeah, gender Yeah, we're not reveals. big gender revealers. I've I've really had it. I worry about burn down a forest. I mean, just have a cake and cut it open and then also give me gifts. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Had it or hit it. Low rise jeans. I'm of the Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera generation. Absolutely had it. Gen Z's trying to bring that back. I don't want to see the top of your vagina. I don't want to see your. (laughs) Absolutely had it. No, thank you. (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) Okay. Had it or hit it. Naps. I don't know, because every other day they're telling me, they're like, naps are good for you. Naps give heart, give you heart attacks. Right. I don't know what which one it is, but I'm going to say hit it because I'm napping, babes. I'm going to nap after this. <laughs> <laughs> Get your nap on. Okay. Had it or hit it, Target. I'm tired of Target hitting me, if we're going to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> every time I go in there, they hit me with the most expensive receipts. Um, I came in for toothpaste and I'm down paying $500. <laughs> 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 How do we get here? I have to hit it. I like Target. I like Target. And I'm glad that they're that the people that I don't want to shop with are boycotting Target because then it's like, okay, great. This is going to be like no homophobes, no racists at Target. I'm glad they're all boycotting it. So it makes me love it even more. And they lying. They are lying. I don't think they've done any of these boycotts. They are going to Target. They are drinking, sucking down that Bud Light. Mm. <laughs> no, they are. <laughs> Sucking it down with the straw. Right. Yeah. Well, Lacey yeah. Mosley, you are an absolute treat, an absolute delight. I am so grateful that you made it out of the suburbs <laughs> to Los Angeles. I hope that you're able to buy real estate soon. Just keep wishing. Light a candle, get a crystal, <laughs> charge it under the moonlight for me. Anything helps. I'll put you. I'll put so you fun. on the Hillsong uh, Prayer Warrior list. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so thank you guys for having me this was so fun it's so fun Lacey thanks so much have a great week see you later 
I loved her and she's infectious, like her enthusiasm and her personality. I was listening to her podcast on my walk and I found I was walking faster because she's just like energy, bottled up energy. She's great. So I have to say, you know, you, every time you did a fuck, Mary kill with guests, right? Before I did it with you at the beginning of this episode, you would say, I fancy myself, you know, incredible at fuck, Mary kill. Yeah. And so we had Jared, we had Heather McMahon, we've had some other people. I, I think their explanations and how much it made me giggle after, I think they were better at the game than you were. You cannot take my number one fuck Mary Kill status away from me in my mind. You're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I mean, trot, I'm just gonna be up here number one in my mind, regardless. I'm gonna, here's the deal. So I'm gonna trot out another one. I'm gonna give okay. you another chance. Okay. Okay, because right now I'd say you're probably at 11. I'm saying you're not rounding out the top 10 of Fuck, Mary Kill. Okay, well, I just want to say that I am in the Olympics of Fuck, Mary Kill, like you're in the Olympics of Pickleball. In my mind, I'm so good at it. All right, all right. We'll um, we'll pull out the permanent record. <laughs> See how I do. The next time we record, I'm going to I'm gonna trot out some really good Fuck, Mary Kills. Okay. And we'll see. I mean, I'm sitting over here fucking Ted Cruz. Throw me a bone. I know, but you just said I'm fucking Ted Cruz. I mean, you need to make me laugh. You need to you, sell this shit. You need to uh, inject humor into it. You're the princess fucking goddamn Diana of <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> All right, listener, please go give us a five-star review and leave a written review. Subscribe to Patreon. Subscribe to all the stuff. Follow us on social media. Send us your DMs on Instagram on what you've had it with, and we will see you next week. Tuesday. We'll see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. Bye. Bye. Tell you what I've had it with. Let's hear it.